So before we are able to test our convolution algorithm, we first need to create a um, we first need to create the array to store the result of the convolution and I'm going to do that by coming up here I'm going to create an array of type double double and I'm going to call this output signal ARR output underscore sig okay let me just call a signal ARR like this and the length of this array is going to be signal length plus impulse response length so I'm going to copy this paste it over here then copy this then paste it here, this is the size of the array, number of elements you can accept. So now we can try out our convolution algorithm and we can call it by just coming over here like this. I'm going to bring this here and then we can perform the convolution in the setup function as well. We don't need to be con convolving in a loop. Um, so we do this and over here I'm going to show you another way of writing readable code you know, usually when we write a function and we keep the prototype up here and we want to call the function, we just delete the data types of the various arguments. One way to use this data type, rather than deleting them, you can make your code more readable by using them as a typecast. So if you want to use them as a typecast, you just put each data type into bracket like this. And this is going to make your code more readable and more professional and um, you often find this when you start writing code for other platforms like, you know, developing your own real-time applications or even your own real-time kernels. When things become very huge, you want to refer to the documentation as little as possible. Um, so we're using it all as a typecast. We don't need to change anything here. So now we just simply need to um, pass the, the various parameters. And this one here says source. Uh, source array. So I'm, get, I'm going to bring input signal over here and um, I'm going to do the same thing, pass the address here. Although it's been typecast, it's fine. The typecast is even better. And then the destination array, we just created that over here. We bring it here as well. Put a yamba sound. Then we'll put this. And then the impulse response array, where is it? It's over here bring this here and then we'll put the ambassador here and the signal source length we already have it it's over here bring it here and then the impulse response length we have it too we bring it here like this and right this is how we call our function now we have to test it out and see if it works so we can simply call our plot signal function and this time we want to plot the content of the output array so i'm going to come over here and copy the address of this array here and put it over here and then the length of this array is the impulse response plus the signal length but let's see something interesting would happen um, we'll see whether our microcontroller is able to compute this if you try this on the um, on the Arduino Uno, it wouldn't work. The data is too much. There's not enough memory. This time, it's not about speed. The Arduino Uno hasn't got enough memory to deal with this data set. So you can create a simple array with like 10 or 5 elements to test out your convolution, um, your convolution algorithm on the Arduino Uno. But for other Arduinos like the Duo, we can test this out. And let's see if the Duo is able to perform this convolution for us. Uh, mostly people don't think Arduino is capable of DSP at all. So let's see if convolution is workable here. Um, so let's see what we've done so far. Yes, we've performed the convolution and we are trying to plot it. And my board selected here is the Arduino Geo and it's got this. So if you have the Uno, you have to create a new source array with 10 or 5 element and then just reduce the impulse response length to 5 or in any case, just follow along this lesson and learn how to compute the algorithm. If you want to compute it on your normal C compiler using your computer or any other platform using, let's say, you've got an ARM Cortex microprocessor, another AVR microprocessor with high, you know, with high memory, the algorithm is the same everywhere, really. And if you get the Arduino Geo, you can try that out as well. So let's click over here. I'll click here to, to download onto my board and compile at the same time. 
says I've got an error here. What does it say? Yeah, there's a typo here. Sorry about that. So let's click here. What we're going to do is we're going to reduce the signal length by doing signal length minus 100. We're just going to take 100 elements out. I'm going to do that by putting coming over here to my convolution function where I'm calling the function. I'm going to say the length of the source is signal length minus 100. I'm going to do this and see what happens. I'm going to download onto my board. It's downloaded. I'm going to click here to plot. As you can see, it's plotted successfully. And as you can see, this new signal has no high frequency component. It's completely smooth. And even if we zoom, if we zoom in, like I said, um, wait, if we zoom in, there's still no high frequency. It's just a single thin. Right, so to actually show you what I mean, let's plot the input signal as well as the result after convolution and see what it looks like. Let's plot both signals and see what they look like and compare the result to the input signal and see whether indeed the impulse response was acting as a low pass filter like we said. So let's come down here below the void loop function to create a function to help us plot both signals. I'm going to give this a very simplistic name called void plot both and um, later on we shall create an actual function that will be able to plot any number of signals we want but let's use this for now. So it's a void void function. It takes no argument and returns nothing. Um, so over here, all we need to do is serial print, serial print, serial dot print. And then we need to plot the, um, the input signal. So this, this function works just for this project. We cannot just use any signal. We just want to plot these two. So we can say the input signal i and of course, as you can see, we have to put a loop around it. So I'm going to say um, pull my uint underscore uint eight underscore t pull an iterator here and come here and say for i equals zero, i is less than. I'll just say i is. This won't plot the entire. This won't plot the full signal, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the length of the input signal as the limit for both signals. And then because of this, I'm going to say for i equals zero, i is less than sig length, like we said over here, we said sig length minus, minus 100. So this is the length of the input signal we're using. So let's just use that over here like this. And then we can say i plus plus. And yeah, within this loop, we come here. Once we print index i, we have to print a comma and then print the output once we print the input signal sample, we have to put a comma and print the output signal sample. So that's how to print two signals in the Arduino serial plotter. So I put a print over here, serial dot print. And as you can see, I'm using print, not print ln. Print ln will be used last. So I have serial dot print here, and then over here I print a comma, and then I put here, and then now we can we can say zero dot print ln because this is the last thing we want to print in the sequence and I'll say I'll say output output signal array like this index zero uh, index i sorry of course we looping through with i like this. And we can put a bit of delay down here. How about we put a delay of five milliseconds? And um, this should be fine. But what's going to happen is, okay, let's see what's going to happen. And then we'll fix it. It's better that way than write everything at once. So we put a prototype here and we come over here to our setup and then we just delete this other print and then this other plot and put this new plot function this one says plot both. So it's going to plot both like this. And I'm going to click here to compile and download onto my board at the same time. Click over here and it's uploading. It's done compiling. And once that's done, I can click over here, come to serial plotter. As you can see, it's printed the input signal and the output result. The output is in the red mark. The input is the is the um, is the blue. So what we have to do is we can lift one of the signals up so that we can see it clearly. 
I'm going to put a simple defined statement, which I'm going to call offset over here. I'm going to say define offset. And let's just say we want offset of five. And let's see how to use this new parameter offset. All I'm going to do is, I want the input signal to be on top. So I'm going to add the offset here, serial dot print input signal index i plus offset. Now let's rebuild and upload onto our board. I'll click over here and then we can click over here to view it. As you can see, perfect. So this is our signal. We have, sorry about that. So we have the input signal here. As we said, this is the input signal. It's got one kilohertz component and 15 kilohertz component. And we saw the impulse response earlier. So we convolve the impulse response with this. And the impulse response was specifically designed in MATLAB to be a six kilohertz low pass filter, meaning it's going to block all frequencies above six kilohertz. Because one kilohertz is lower than six kilohertz, it's able to successfully go through the filter. Hence, this is a filter we've created. This is the result, this is the input signal. So this convolution, we've developed our own convolution algorithm and it's very simple, very straightforward. Like we saw in the theoretical class, this is how to make convolution work. In the next lesson, we shall see how to use the CMSYS DSP algorithm to compute the convolution or to convolve two signals. So um, that's all there is for this lesson and I shall see you in the next lesson.